Christo and Jean-Claude were a married couple who created environmental works of art. Environmental art began in the 1960s and 1970s, perhaps because of the concern with the health of the earth at that time. Their works are deliberately temporary because this enhances their value and intensity, just as the idea of death makes us more aware of life's precious brevity. Crystal and Jean Claude want feelings of love, joy, beauty, tenderness, and sharing surrounding their work. They actually liked the idea that their work can be seen as irrational and that it has absolutely no practical function, just poetical creativity that makes people free and smile. Let's have a look at one of their most fascinating works called The Gates. This was a logistically complex project that was finally realized over a period of two weeks in 2005 in New York Central Park. Each gate, a 16 feet rectilinear three-sided rigged vinyl frame, rested on two steel footings supporting a saffron colored fabric panel that hung loosely from the top. They created an impressive total of 7,503 gates that ran over 23 miles of walkways. They were inspired to create the gates by the vast flow of people walking through the streets in New York City. They chose Central Park as a site because it was a part of their life and where their son had grown up. The gates remain a complex testament to two controversial topics in contemporary art, how to create meaningful public art and how art responds to and impacts our relationship with the built environment. The intention of the clouds was to create a golden ceiling, creating warm shadows for visitors walking along the Central Park path. This installation alters the experience of seeing and walking along the paths that run throughout the park. The title, being The Gates, alludes to a threshold, a point of exit and entrance. In fact, in some places, the structures form an oval where there is no starting point and no end point, and ultimately no point from which to view the work. The gates alludes to the tradition of Japanese Tori gates, traditionally constructed at the entrance to Shinto shrines. The temporary quality of the project is an aesthetic decision. Their works are temporary in order to endow the works of art with feelings of urgency to be seen and the love and tenderness brought by the fact that they will not last. Those feelings that are reserved for other temporary things such as childhood and our own life. The succession of the 7,503 gates moving carpaciously in the wind, projecting on one another at different levels, sometimes hiding the buildings around the park, revealed the serpentine design of the walkways. Though full of energy and activity, Central Park is never a rowdy place. There are restaurants, a great museum, a castle, an outdoor theater, people running, playing soccer, walking their dogs, walking their children, riding horses, and just having a grand time. The winding saffron line of the gates appear to encompass all this and to represent the contemplative spirit that underlies every bit of energy in the park. The path offered a place from which to see and think about the world. However, Central Park, a much-loved urban oasis, is one of the most famous examples of urban planning. The gates reinforce and highlight pre-existing roots within this man-made environment. The whole idea of the gates was to make a person feel like they were inside the art, and it just framed the park and the trees and everyone around it, and it made people feel excited to be inside a color. It is an installation made for the pedestrian in motion and not a still object that asks us to stand before it. The same saffron color appeared in an earlier work by these two called Valley Curtain located in Colorado built from 1970 to 1972. This work was composed of nylon polyamide installed between two mountains 1,250 feet apart. Here, they wanted to create an artificial barrier that ranged from 182 to 365 feet high. The valley curtain captures the essence of the large-scale projects. It was important for them to create something, although temporary, but something memorable that would remain permanent in the viewer's memories. 
their works can be seen as sublime and unique, as opposed to the abundance of repetition in the world, Christo and Jean-Claude have liked to create gentle disturbances in spaces owned by human beings to make people become more aware of themselves and their surroundings. Not only that, but they wanted to offer a feeling of love and tenderness to their works as an added dimension and as an additional aesthetic quality. Their efforts on every project were not divided, rather shared. The clouds had always sought to establish art outside the confines of a museum. Christo and Jean Claude have always insisted that their work is about aesthetic impact and not laced with deep intellectual meaning. And that is what makes them truly unique as creators of art.